A very good morning to you. My name is David Batsoff, and he says trying to pull up all these wonderful um, slides that I've set up for the chat this morning. Uh, as I say, my name is David Batsoff, and this is In Conversation With. And today, um, we're chatting to Skull Pretorius, who is the principal trainer at Ulavani um, Environmental Training. Uh, Skulk, how are you doing? Morning, David. I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. It's only a pleasure. Firstly, um, how has lockdown been for you guys? And more importantly, where are you based? We're based in the Eastern Cape. Um, most of our training and our campus is on Amakala Game Reserve. It's approximately an hour north of Port Elizabeth, about half an hour south of uh, Grahamstown. And okay. uh, yes, the, the, sorry, the, the, the lockdown has, has been uh, um, very real here in the Eastern Cape. And uh, yeah, the, the tourism industry, but I think all industries has, has uh, really been suffering the last year. Um, but we, we are holding thumbs and we, we continue our good work and uh, hopefully the, the tide will turn soon. Great. Now tell us a little bit about the, the training that your organization offers because at the end of the day, it must be very difficult to try and bring people on board um, to be in a group, although it's in the open, but now everything seems to have gone online. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, we we started training and, and guiding in, in the 90s, so we, we're pretty old school in terms of, of training guides, which always happened on game reserves, and it was really a practical application, and that's where people can understand and see and, um, you know, learn new things easier when, when it's practically in front of you. So it has been a challenge uh, the last year or so. Um, with the online training and setting the online training up. But I think it's been uh, a new avenue for, for nature lovers to, to learn about um, nature, not necessarily to become a guide, most probably, or, or sometimes. But the, the online platform has, has given nature lovers an opportunity to, to learn more and uh, see whether guiding is, is really for them or you know, is it a career option for, for the people. So they... they they can learn more about it and see what it's all what it all entails. And then they can make a choice whether they want to pursue it and carry on with a practical training course to complete their qualification or just use the knowledge and, and uh, you know enjoy being out in nature more. So the online, the online training has, has been a challenge for us. Um, normally you have the people in, in the classroom and you can explain things and, and you have eye contact with people and there's questions and, you know, that leads you into um, what the, the, the audience is looking for. And there's also the practical application going out on the reserves and and then practically illustrate what you've done in the classroom. So it's it's been challenging to put it all on um, the, the online training. So we, we started with a, uh, a learning management system, the Moodle system. We didn't want to start creating a fragmented sending emails and sending documents here and there. So we, from the start, we went with a, a learning management system, which is Moodle, where we could set everything out uh, structured. And uh, the big challenge was to, to get the presentation together. So we didn't want to just record a lecture taking place in the classroom, but we wanted to create more of a documentary feel uh, for the lectures or the presentation. So, um, we tried to use as much audio and visual to, to illustrate to the people what we mean with voiceovers and videos of what we do on training and what happens on game drive. So it's, it's been quite interesting to put everything, the, 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 the theoretical, the academic, the classroom, the, the practical applications, everything in these presentations. And I think for the next year or two, we'll most probably after every course when we have new um, uh, information, we'll, we'll update these presentations to, to make them as interactive as possible. So the, the way you're presenting is not like a multiple layered Zoom conference. It is people watching the videos that you've prepared um, and then taking from it what they will. 
But how do you promote, you know, I have to put my hand up when it comes to distance learning. I'm no good at it. You know, I start, I start yes. watching and then all of a sudden I'll go, hang on, squirrel. Um, what, 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 what else can I, what else can I go and have a look at? And I lose it very quickly. So how have you overcome yes. that? So how, how we've set it up is uh, every morning, oh, every Monday starts with a webinar where we get everybody um, on a webinar where we can talk to each other and we then plan what, what is in the week ahead. So our 10 week nature enthusiast online course is, is a structured course. So it's not a um, hand in workbooks when you have time. So it is a structured course. It's a 10 week online course. So we generally start on a Monday looking at what we can expect the week ahead and which uh, workbook assignments needs to be done by the end of the week. And uh, then we have a WhatsApp group as well. And also on the Moodle system, we have a chat room where we can communicate during the week if there's questions or queries or uh, more if needed. And then every Friday, we, we have a webinar where we go through all these um, subjects that we're dealing with in that week. So every Friday is really when we get together, everybody's on the Zoom meeting, and we discuss the uh, questions and the subjects that we're busy with that week. And then prepare them also for the exam that will happen on the Sunday. So every Monday we get together, we plan the week ahead and what assignments needs to be done and so on. The Friday we get together to see if there's still any queries or, or questions. And then every Sunday there's an online exam that the students write there. And then the following week again on the Monday we meet um, to discuss the exam and if there's any queries or questions that comes out of the exam and we look again at, at the week ahead. So it is a structured um, course that we offer um, and I know in, in the future with uh, more nature lovers finding this, this type of online course uh, we might have a, a challenge, you know, in terms of um, time frames. people from Australia and America joining the course at the same time. But all these webinars that we do have are, are also recorded and is on the Moodle system. Okay, so um, at the end of the day, with, with all of this, you've also given your students um, a very specific time. So in other words, you do a week's worth of work, you write the exam, and I take it these exams are for Gaza-based. Yes, the, the exams on, on the Sundays are, are purely the Vagaza manual and the Vagaza workbook exams. So there's, there's very little practical um, questions on the Sunday's exams. That, that's why after the 10 week um, online course, the learners will then write the nature enthusiast, the Vagaza nature enthusiast exam. So okay. they will get us out of, out of the, the online course. And then from there, they have or, uh, cho choices or, or options. You know, if if they are young learners or learners with uh, little experience in nature, or just young people who've got little work experience, they then have the option to join our full-time ten-week field guide course, where we go slowly through all the different um, aspects. And at the end of the ten-week um, full-time field guide course. They can then get practically assessed and write the Vagaza apprentice field guide exam at the end to complete their qualification. Or there's also an option for people that's a bit more experienced and has got a lot more work experience or relevant nature experience. That once they have the nature enthusiast certificate, they can join us for a five week practical um, on site training course where we will then focus on the practical application. So all the academic work of the Vagaza curriculum has been um, done and completed on the online course. Then for five weeks, we can focus on the practical application and the species specific in our thicket, in the Eastern Cape thicket environment. <coughs> Excuse me. And then prepare them for the final Vagaza exam and the final practical assessment to complete their qualification. Well, for those nature lovers that's just out there and just want to know more, once they've been on the nature or have achieved the nature enthusiast certificate, we also offer environmental experiences um, from one to four weeks where we then um, go out onto, we, we focus on four aspects in, in that four weeks. You know, one aspect is the, the life of a trails guide. 
and we spend most of the week on foot and focusing on tracking and trailing of, of big animals. Uh, the next week we focus on birding and we go through all the different biomes and, and different areas in, in the Eastern Cape focusing on birds. We also do a week of marine um, that we focus on um, all the, the marine environment that we also have here in the Eastern Cape. Uh, and then the last week we focus on animal behavior. So for people that just want to know more and have an overall idea of how the planet functions, uh, they can join us on this four-week environmental explorers um, experiences if they just want to know more and, and apply what they've been studying for the 10 weeks. Are the courses structured in such a way that they, they have a, a beginning and an end date, um, Skulk, or can people join in at any particular point? We've, yeah, that, that was a, a big choice in, in the beginning, but we've, we've decided to, to go with specific dates in the year. So we, we run four courses during the year. So we have a starting date in January, April, July, and then October. We just found that people are more focused and you can keep their interest. Once they book on and decide they're going to do a structured course, then, then you've got their attention. If, sometimes if you run courses that people can hand in, assignments when they want to, you know, sometimes you, you lose them along the way. And they, yes, they see squirrels and then... <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> yeah, so uh, we, we, we try and, and, you know, it's not it's not the perfect way to, yeah. to try and fill the gaps. You know, and most people that are interested in, in nature are outdoors people, adventurous people, and they want to get out. But, you know, in, in the times that we have today, uh, it's an opportunity. It's it's a it's an avenue for people to to get involved. You know, as I said, we our presentation is also we want to make as documentary wise as, as possible, so people enjoy it and we, we plant a seed and an interest in 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 those those subjects yeah. that we cover. Yeah. To try and keep them, you know, entertained and 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 captured. Because at the end of the day, things like ARH and driving, in that you can't really do um, from a um, online point of view, you've got you've got to do it practically. No, definitely. Yeah, the, the practical side of it is is the most important bit. You know, so in today's times, it's good to to get uh, all the academic work and all the the groundwork um, out of the way, and and you do have support with with trainers that you can you can um, ask questions, and you've got time to do the research and 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 the background. Yeah. Um, of these qualifications and you know there's the platform interacting with the other people that are also on the course at the same time but yes the practical practical application is is really um what we hope and dream people actually come and experience because that that's when it becomes real and uh, you know you, you you really experience it when when you out there on foot yeah because at the end of the day you can't sorry my my cat is being difficult he want, he wants he wants to be part of this conversation and I don't want to let him. Um, so you, you may see him sort of enter screen right and then try and take everything off the shelf, which is when I cut back to a slide and you won't see me hurl him across the room. No, I won't do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose at the end of the day, Skulk, that's one of the things is the interaction between people, the sharing of knowledge, yeah. um, the absorption of knowledge in, in situ, so to speak, rather than just yes. looking through through a workbook, which can be, I don't want to say dull, um, because that's, if you're interested, anything is interesting, but it's it's not yes. as experiential as actually being out in the bush and and tracking a mouse or um, an insect through, through grass, for instance. Yeah, 100%. The, the online course is, is really geared to, you know, a lot of people that, that are interested in maybe changing their career to becoming a field guide or entering the tourism industry, they're not, some of them, it's, it's a big decision, you know, that they sell everything that they're doing back up and, and go to the bush. So, yeah. you know, this online course is, is an opportunity for them to have a look and see what, what the industry is about and what is expected of them. Um, and as I said, the, through the presentations as well, there will be lots of... Um, experiences and, and examples of what they expect in the industry. But at the end of the day, it's, it really is the, the practical application that, that just opens people's yeah. eyes and, and 
pieces to puzzle just just fall fall in place. But in in today's society, you know, um, this is an, an an avenue for them to to research a bit about their passion. And yeah, uh, yes, certainly. Uh, I hope that people do come to the bush and and come and apply what they've studied. Um, and age group, or, or is there a minimum age or a maximum age for these courses? Considering there is going no, to be no. there is going to be practical at some particular point where they may have to spend four days yes. out on a trail or something like that. Yes, we we don't have a, 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 as long as people understand what what the physical uh, demands are for these courses. Uh, but we don't have a, a, uh, an age limit on, on the course. You know, strangely enough, we've got uh, a grandpa and a granddaughter doing that, that is starting an okay. online course with, and they want to follow up with uh, maybe a five week practical course to, to complete the qualification just for their own interest, or maybe join us then for the four weeks together. She stays in Australia, he's in South Africa. So this is something that they can do together. Now that's wonderful. And, uh, I must want him to tell his age, but he's you know close to eighties. Yeah. Um, we've had aliens from Savannah guides in, in the past as well that joined us who who's in the eighties. So uh, one manages that when when you're on site. Yeah. <laughs> but most of these people understand the the physical demands that mm. that, that it does. To be honest, to tell you whether they you know physically in in shape enough to to do something like this or not. So, and even youngsters, you know, we, we've got uh, a couple of people from schools uh, in Grahamstown and in PE who also follow the Nature Enthusiast um, certificate. For them, we allow them to do it uh, as assignments are already and when they have time to do it. But even people from 14, 15 years old that's got a passion for, for nature can also join, you know. So there's no, for the, of course, definitely there, there's no age restrictions. We, we want everybody that loves nature to, to learn more about how the planet functions and, and how intricate everything is put together, you know, and the ecosystems that actually keeps us healthy. Are the courses conducted solely in English or can you do it in other languages or are other language workbooks available? At the moment, everything is, is in English. Um, we do have interested parties in, in uh, Italy, some of our previous students who, who are interested in um, helping us with nature lovers and nature enthusiasts in, in Italy who's, who's interested in, in this nature enthusiast certificate. So we think in, into the future definitely uh, we will try and translate and, and make it possible for, for other languages as, mm. as well to learn about it, definitely. Um, but that's that you Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, just at, at the moment, we only have the, the work in, in English. Yeah. In English. Um, the next course, when is it due to start? Our next online course starts on the 22nd of February. Um, that's when that starts, so in about three weeks' time. So I think, here, here we'll toss this out, that um, if people are watching this before Valentine's Day, then maybe this is a great Valentine's present to themselves or to a loved one, rather than wasting <laughs> it on chocolate and flowers, which are going to die and get eaten. Here's, here's a skill that you can utilize for the longest while. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, you know, it's this is as soon as you start studying the planet and, and you start realizing how intricately everything is, it's just so in balance. Um, you learn so much from it, you know, as you as a person. So anybody it, it's not it's not just for people that want to become guides or conservation managers i think everybody on the planet needs to learn a little bit about the planet and how it functions and as soon as you start learning how all the interrelationships um, are so amazing that you know it, it has a role on on your own life and and you do approach things differently and with more ethics and more respect so you know and, and especially young people if they understand the planet and, and how it functions into the future, they can just make better decisions. So I, I feel okay. everybody, yes, everybody on, on the planet needs to take some time to study the planet and, and just understand how it all functions. Indeed, and, and I suppose in a way COVID is, has offered us part of that opportunity just to slow down, take stock, um, and just think it, what it is we can do going forward to make this planet a better yeah. one to live on. 
yeah, I also feel people definitely has gone gone back to the basics, the, the absolute basics of life and, and family and friends and, you know, important things. And, you know, everybody's financially constrained. So, you know, looking again at what, what are really necessary and, yeah. and what are important. And more people are noticing nature. I, I can see it everywhere. People are yeah. noticing butterflies and and all sorts of flowers and things instead of putting photos of, of their lunch, they, they putting more <laughs> photos of nature and things that they're experiencing or hearing, you know. So there's definitely a shift um, that we can feel, you know, people are getting more sensitive to, to the environment, which is fantastic. I, I do believe that um, you guys are based down in the Eastern Cape. And I think the, the positive that people can take away about doing an online course with you guys um, is the fact that you're sitting in a house it's somewhere warmer than what the Eastern Cape can become, specifically the Gravestown area in winter, is, is about that cold. Uh, we, we live in an amazing place. You know, we, it can be summer any, any time of the year. It could be winter any time of the year. It's, it really is an amazing place. If, if you want to study the weather and climate of South Africa, then come and spend some time in the Eastern Cape, you know. <laughs> It's, it's my home province. I was I was born and raised in Port Elizabeth. That's the only reason I'm teasing yeah. you is because because I'm allowed to. I'm from the Eastern Cape. Yeah. No, it is. We have four seasons in one day. Yeah. Exactly. Skulk, um, if people are keen to to join us, um, either on February to the the course that starts on the 22nd of February, you also got I've got dates here in May and August. Um, 24th of May and 23rd of August. But I suppose the e easiest way is to people to check in with you um, and find out when, when the courses will be run. So how, how can they get hold of you? They can, uh, they can get us on, on our website at uh, www.unovani.co.za. Www they can find us there. They can also find us on the Vagaza website and uh, accredited training providers. They are welcome to email me directly um, at skunk at ulovani.co.za. Um, people are also more than welcome to send me a message or give me a phone call. Uh, my telephone number is 082 And uh, even if it's just questions on the industry or other options, whatever it might be, um, any questions, queries are, are welcome. So they can find us on, on our website, on the Vagaza website. Um, they can email me directly or phone me, send me a message. All right, Ulovani is spelled U-L-O-V-A-N-E. And it's .co. That's correct. ZA. What does Ulovani mean? 100%. I should have asked you that right up front. <laughs> we, in the beginning, when we started the company, we we were wondering, you know, what what would represent us as as a company and and our outlook on on our company. And we thought about lions and elephants and buffaloes and and all sorts of. But that's not really who we are. You know, we we are more ethical in the bush, we, we have huge respect for the bush, we try and blend in with the bush, we don't try and dominate, um, we take, you know, one step at a time, we don't rush into things, you know, with our students as well, you know, it's our personal approach of one step at a time and, and not to, to, to force people to, to go over the edge. Um, and we adapt uh, during this time as well with the COVID. And I mean, we will continuously have to adapt to different circumstances. And we, we think that we're people that, that also adapt in the environment and change colors if, if we need to. Um, and also to, you know, it, it's the only animal that can look forward and backwards at, at the same time on the planet. You know, it's the, it's the only animal that, that can work their eyes independently. And, uh, we would like to strive to look into the future, but also don't forget to look back to, to what's important and, and where you've gone through. Um, so that as, as well, our, our logo itself is, is the is this, um, Southern Dwarf Chameleon. And uh, we're proudly South African, uh, all species of Dwarf Chameleons, the whole family of Dwarf Chameleons are only found in South Africa. So we thought that that's also a, a quite a fitting um, I think so. Is why, to, why to find indeed? something. Yeah. So, South Africa. 
Good for you. Skull, thank you so much for joining me uh, today on um, the Fugaza in conversation with, um, I've been chatting to Skull Pretorius, who's the principal trainer at Ulavali um, Environmental Training. My name is David Batsoffman. He's Skull Pretorius. Thank you so much for joining us today, Skull. David, thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, all the best.